My allergies are going to kick up through this whole thing, though, man. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. Also, we got that on recording. No, Welcome, everybody, to the Glorious <laughs> Sunrise Podcast. We always, like, get a little snippet at the beginning, which just makes me happy. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah. John, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm uh, getting vacation ready. And, yeah, uh, bro. Yeah, man. We were kind of chatting about that. I'm stoked to get away for a weekend and not worry about you lovely folks watching uh, because I'm tired of your shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, um, God. <laughs> <laughs> let's start off strong. He's had, look, man, he's had a rough week at work. I did he's have a rough busy. week. He's it's been, been a busy. long week. Um, <laughs> we but love it's you fine. guys. I do love you guys. <laughs> shit. Uh, very there much. goes all the sponsors. There goes all of our viewership. It's been great. Um, no, uh, it, it has been a busy week, but I am excited to get out of uh, out of town for a little while. But before that, John and I had to sit down and chat uh, and and record this podcast episode, which I'm really stoked about. Yeah. I think this is a fun one. You you mentioned this idea a couple weeks ago, uh, mm -hmm. which is to talk about the cards that we're really excited for rotating out. And then, of course, some that we're not quite so excited that are rotating out because we want them to stick miss around. Them. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to kind of jump into some lists here. Uh, we each kind of picked five in each category that we're going to be going through. Uh, I do just to, to spit some information here at the beginning at the risk of losing yet more of our audience. Um, the, uh, the, the rotate data always bores people uh, is, is the joke there. It's a terrible joke. Um, September 9th is the rotation. Uh, yeah. So we've got a little over a month. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to enjoy these cards one last time and all that stuff. You'll notice on the channel, I I know Sunday at least, so yesterday, um, played a Seraph deck. Seraph did not make my list, but Seraph was kind of one of the honorable mentions for me uh, to kind of jump into that al already. And uh, I'm going to miss that card. And so I thought it'd be fun to build a deck around it. We may see some more of those kinds of decks on the channel uh, over the course of the next month just to revisit and have some fun with it. So uh yeah i'm excited though um i am excited for the new set dominaria looks I, I think we're gonna have some fun with it yeah man uh so we did we took a we took a look at dominaria last night at the end of live um my chat started blowing up talking about uh mtg or wizards of the coast did their little sneak peek yesterday i didn't even pay attention to it Same. uh but we did we brought up uh, <laughs> i know a good content creator yeah, right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we brought up uh we brought up a web page with all of the uh sneaks and kind of went through them uh at the end of live last night um yeah man i haven't seen anything that just really blew my mind yet uh that sure. new jaya her ultimate's crazy uh cast yeah. an instant uh red sorcery yeah. sorcery or instant and then cast it twice again yeah yeah that's... i really liked jaya <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a painful ultimate it's yeah. gross man but uh i mean yeah i'm looking forward to it it's going to be a little bit larger set we had discussed that too i say that you know that's kind of a wizards of the coast thing when big rotation hits uh that first set that comes out is just a little larger than the average just to go do do a little more widespread mm -hmm. so looking forward to it yeah and i i mean this is a pretty uh pretty big set for for magic in general just going mm -hmm. back to dominaria and kind of the origins obviously we did that a couple of years back and i would say arguably that's one of the better more recent sets was the the return to dominaria the first time if that makes sense um yep we had a lot of fun in that set and i think we you and i talked about that in fact in the last episode that in recent years that was one of our collectively favorite sets that was yeah not part of a block it was just a you know I think you'd asked what was one of my most recent favorite or what I thought yeah. was most powerful sets. And I think okay. that's where that came up. Yeah. yeah uh, Dominary is crazy, man. There's a oh, lot yeah. of, there's a lot of what I would consider nuclear possibilities with this. <laughs> I mean, we could end up with some really, really strong stuff. It's definitely going to warp standard and standard needs a fresh kick in the ass. So uh, I'm man, looking yeah, forward it to it, man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah it does man it's it's straight it's straight painful right now for content it is a creators. little yeah we, you were you mentioned that right before we jumped in that the next month before this rotation happens it's just going to be a, a slug fest but uh, dry we'll man get through it. We'll let's get through let's it. we'll plug a car it's wasteland it's, <laughs> it's wasteland. wasteland perfect 
Uh, I actually land. found my oh, my original wasteland the other day. Dude, I, I got really it, it. it is a judge foil, I believe. You have a judge, man. You just have a judge foil of like everything. I feel like I've got a lot of judge foils. <laughs> 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 However, I don't have I don't have damnation and uh, and Armageddon, and those are two that uh, I want. They're and, uh, damnation's beautiful, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's some of my favorite artworks ever. Yeah, but yeah, there's sure. a whole nother episode. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, <laughs> where do you want to jump in? Because again, this was your episode idea. So let's uh, let's lean on you. Where do you want to go first? Okay, let's let's go. Each honorable mentions of cards that are rotating out that we hate to see, but we kind of like to see. Um, you can pick either one for your honorable mention, but mine actually falls in the middle. I hate to see it go, but I like yeah. to see it go. Uh, lands, pathways, and creature lands. We had yeah. some really format warping creature lands this time with uh, the hive and the den and the hall and the frost dragon. And then what am I missing here? Lair of the Hydra. But yep. we're also losing crawling barons too. So. Um, but I think it's a good thing. I don't know if they're going to come out with some creature lands. I would imagine they're going to, but, uh, that and the pathways, uh, yeah. it's really going to change it up for a little bit. It kind of narrows down, you know, you and I talk so much about right now standard has such a flexible, uh, color spectrum where you can kind mm. of run whatever colors you need to run. Like there's the land support for the majority of what you're trying to do. But I think a lot of that, to your point, is because of the pathway lands, because you get to to flexibly say, oh, I need this or I need this. And, you know, that's a that's not really something we've seen a ton of that I can think of in previous years. And so it's kind of nice to be able to choose which you want. And obviously there's pluses and minuses, but uh, to see it rotate out certainly will hurt flexibility uh, a little bit. So I'm curious as well if Dominaria will kind of implement some number of dual lands of some kind i'm sure there will be um but i don't know what kind of dual lands they'll be if that makes sense so uh i'm really interested to see how that goes and so yeah i'm i'm kind of with you on that i felt like in particular the pathway lands are one that i really hate to see go the mm -hmm. the man lands are of course great cards and you know they're format warping for sure uh they were they, they were yeah they're they're massive um and but I lean more towards I'm kind of ready to see them go <laughs> a little bit more. Um, as much as I love them, I, I'm kind of happy to see them go. Uh, just yeah. just because the inevitability that they provide is a little frustrating sometimes for, for particular decks. And so that's just one of those. But um, I to, to go to my card that I truthfully do hate to see go, I, I am going to honorably mention Seraph uh, because I do think Seraph was an underrated card uh, in general. Um, mm. I didn't see a ton of people really capitalizing on Seraph. Certainly some people did. And I mean, we have played a handful of decks that, that utilize Seraph and that kind of stuff. And it's a blast of a card to play with. Very powerful, very good. But um, it's not one of those that like warped the meta in any major way. Uh, it was just a solid card in my opinion. Um, and so I, I hate to see Seraph go. Also just has really cool art. Like yeah. that art is badass. Yeah, the art's amazing on it. Um, I, I, I kind of see Seraph kind of as the, you know, um, I wouldn't say showed up to the party late, but uh, yeah. right guy, wrong time. Yeah. Um, got outshined a lot. Uh, it is uh, it is a great three drop um, yeah. card. Uh, could be utilized in a lot of ways. And, I, and we've discussed this before, too. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing hits the board, and I know how powerful it is. If it hits, if my opponent drops it, it I'm removing it it's as fast answer. as I possibly can. Uh, it can get out of control. So I think it was, uh, I think it was just, you know, right guy, wrong time. Mm -hmm. I agree. I 100% agree. Um, but I'm with you. It's a, it's a bit of a must answer for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to jump more into the true list, do you want to start with the yeah. ones that we're sad to see go or that we're happy to see go? We're happy to see go. And I'm going to okay. go from, I'm going to go like five to number one. Okay. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm good with that. Okay. So you want me to go first or you? Yeah. You jump right in. Okay. Number five, Goldspan. Goldspan <laughs> Dragon, man. Look, yeah, man. We had a lot of we had a lot of cards that just absolutely warped and dominated the format for a long time, and uh, Goldspan is definitely one of them. Uh, you can almost 
there's ways to get it in on turn three with the shambling gas and the deadly mm-hmm. dispute combo. Um, even if not, it was almost a regular four drop if you played it right uh, with like the Celestis or any type of little bit of mana ramp that you had with Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, the four four flying haste and it just absolutely dominated, you know, with making treasures tap for yeah. two. Uh, ready to see that thing go. I liked yeah. it though. I mean, I've used it. I like the card, but uh, definitely one that I'm I'm happy to see go because uh, it's held its yeah. grip too long. I really thought that thing was going to be uh, banned a whole lot quicker and it just never did get banned. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so <laughs> no, ready I'm for you. it to go. Uh, Goldspan to, did make my list as well. Um, so I, I had it higher up on my list to be brutally honest. It was not number one, but I do, I, I'm with you on Goldspan. That was a frustrating one for me. Um, it's a great card. As you said, like playing it always feels really good because it is just such a power play. And yeah. even if they do, you know, have an instant speed spell to remove it or something like that, you still get something out of the deal. And so it never feels like you're as far behind as you would have otherwise been. And, um, it's, it's just such a powerhouse card, man. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm glad to see it go. Yeah. No, I mean, there's soul shattered. It can take it out and stuff where you sure. don't have to target it, but, uh, it just doesn't get ran that much anymore. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it just really warped. It's, yeah. it's held its grip the entire time it's been here. Yes. Um, I'll jump into my number five, uh, which is kind of an interesting one, I think. Uh, but it's blade historian. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here's the thing. Here's what's really annoying to me about Blade Historian. It's just like, uh, you drop it, you attack, and you're probably going to win. And it's like, it's not a very fun card in general, because it's not fun to interact with. It's not a fun card to like lay down on the field and then try and figure out how you deal with it. You either sweep or you lose. It's like, okay, that's it. Like answer. Uh, and for me, it's just, it doesn't it doesn't make interactions interesting at all. It's just a like here, we're going to make combat a lot harder for Mm -hmm. one player and that's it. (laughs) It's like, okay, cool, I guess. Um, But in particular, I I bring this card up because, you know, for a while we actually haven't for, for a considerable, considerable amount of time. I don't think we really saw it do that much in the middle of the meta. So what Mm -hmm. I mean is when it first came out, obviously we saw it quite a bit, uh, then other sets kind of started coming out, other decks started coming out, and for a while we didn't really see it. But just in the last couple of weeks, I've been up against countless Boros decks that are like Blade Historian, Blade Historian, Blade really? Historian. Really? Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting, because that was almost what I was going to mention. Yeah. Uh, and so it's one of those that was, it just had a weird presence in the meta all the time, mm. uh, because it it wasn't super consistent but it's just very very good and it's just like well yeah. this is this isn't very fun to deal with <laughs> so uh for me I, it wasn't my favorite kind of card i'm also more of a control player i know you'll appreciate that as well and so mm-hmm. like the combat step quote unquote being the point at which you win the game isn't super interesting to me it's just kind of straightforward and so to basically amplify that through a single card on the field makes it just ugh, not that exciting to me uh, it's a great card. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, it's very powerful, but I just I'm I'm happy to see that one go. Yeah, um, I really don't buy the card um, just because I'll I'll find a way to remove it. I know yeah. that's one of those cards that's just super good as well. Um, but I haven't seen it in Boros, and it wasn't in Boros the the standard meta um, tier one build for a while. Yeah. Um, but if you've been seeing it, that's great uh-huh. because I yeah. haven't I haven't been grinding on the ladder to the point where I've seen a whole lot of Boros with it. But uh, mm-hmm. I've always wondered. That card fit perfectly in Boros. What yeah. value are you getting out of Boros that, that you can't fit one or two of these bad boys in there? Well, that's the and, thing. Uh, I mean, it's a top end play, but it's the top end play, right? For oh yeah. Boros deck. I mean. Yeah. Obviously. Oh yeah. Well, and I mean, just all that damage just pushing through. Yeah. Uh, constantly, anyways, man. Boros is a damn headache, man. It's you got to put up walls and have answers every damn mm-hmm. turn because they're just gonna, you know, uh, especially Boros burn they're either yeah. going to be punching you in the face or just shooting over the top. So 
Yep. Nah, I like him. Uh, I, I, don't, oh, I don't necessarily like the card. I saw him more <laughs> like a tour brand card, you know, just something that pumps. It was, yeah. it was something that added steroids to an already good deck, which yep. I can't stand. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So, so, yeah. <laughs> Interesting pick, man. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my number four is uh, Zika's Chariot. I thought you might pick a Seekers Chariot. <laughs> God damn, man. That damn thing, dude. What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> four <laughs> drop. So good. A four drop for an 8-8. Eight, eight. And I yeah. know people are like, well, you got to tap the two, two, two uh, kittens to get to, to crew it. And, uh, no, man. You had old growth troll. Now you got freaking topiary stomper. I mean, yeah, it's going to have so many sickness one turn. But what the hell yeah. was this value town coming out? And then, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to give it a really good planeswalker yeah uh, and you could create tokens off of that and then we're going to create another planeswalker that can create a token of itself coming in and you can create yeah. a token off of that and oh by the way we're going to do tamio <laughs> and you can create a token of binding of the old gods which i have and just destroy somebody's <laughs> complete board state and i have <laughs> yeah. because it's i mean you bring in it's tokens broken. and it's just yeah man chariots just value town after value town man and um I, i'm glad that mono green kind of died down a yeah. little bit because now you see it more in like some crossbreed decks with the jund and the gruel yeah. and stuff like that but uh yeah man I just don't want to have to look for that card no more. <laughs> so, no, I'm, so. I'm with you. I think um, I think Asika's Chariot is a prime example of a card that is obviously good on its own, um, mm -hmm. but because of the meta surrounding it, it was just like way over the top. Um, and for all the reasons you mentioned, there were a million different cards. I mean, Obnixilis was a great example, but um, even Tamio and stuff like that, some some maybe lesser the tree played folk. cards. The Tree Folk there's just so many great options for for crewing it and then copying those tokens and it's ridiculous and and then they went and printed fable of the mirror breaker and i'm like oh great <laughs> so now we get a 2-2 with ramp even better um yeah so i i was not uh i, I mean i loved playing the card because it is just a powerhouse card but it is yeah. very frustrating when you see it hit the field uh and it really made you it forced you into artifact removal a bit more because you didn't want to give them the opportunity to crew and attack in. And so you kind of yeah. had to find instant speed artifact removal a little bit more, you know, on, on top of things. So that was a bit of a frustrating one. I agree. Yeah, definitely a frustrating card. And I did. I won't disagree yeah. with you. I played it too. I played yeah. it too. And I did all the hijinks with it and I copied everything. <laughs> and I mean, I even, I even like copying mascot exhibition tokens with it, man. Give me a bunch of four <laughs> fours. But now you yeah. got Titan of Industry dropping stuff. I mean, yeah. you, got, you got tokens everywhere, man. Get this thing yeah. out of standard. Get this yeah. thing out of standard, bro. <laughs> It'll be good to have that gone. Yeah. Um, my number four. Um, is actually righteous valkyrie um i <laughs> i uh I, I actually played this card quite a bit um because i always kind of defaulted to testing out the life gain deck pretty early on in the meta so anytime a new set would come out it was just kind of an obvious starting point because the deck kind of was just built about around righteous valkyrie uh and so it was a really easy starting point so it's really fun and it's very powerful and I actually like it in other formats more than I like it in standard. It's just an annoying fucking card in standard, man. It's just like, it's again, another one of those where it's, it needs to be removed as quickly as possible because if you get to the point where they get just one life gain hit off of it, uh, they're probably going to be pretty close to that threshold of just pumping their board. And it's like, okay, well, at that point, yeah. you either sweep or you're dead. And it's like... <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and so for me, it was just a frustrating card. Again, I, I find myself naming a lot of cards that I enjoyed playing with. But at the same time, like, I, I think just in general, it's better for it to be gone. Um, that being said, Righteous Valkyrie, I don't see very often now in the meta. Um, angels. Angels, definitely. But, like, I haven't faced an Angels deck in quite a while. So maybe that's just, yeah. you know small subset of the community i haven't been up against it but um it's one of those where it's it's just so annoying <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it is, man. But look, I, I had fun with it too. One of my favorite things to do with Righteous Valkyrie was to play it like a um, Azorius or Jeskai mm -hmm. and then hit Mystic Reflection on it and then hit like Starnheim for eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just have your life total shoot to a million yep. because it's not like you get one and then one and then one and stack and they all come into the board at the same time and multiply each other yeah so uh it was it was a beautiful thing man yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh it's a great card it was but, just frustrating as hell but it does get abused with orzov angels is the perfect deck for it um yeah. and it is a pain it is one that you have to constantly remove i would put it right there with legion angel which didn't make my list i hate mm. legion angel too just um i love using it i'll throw it yeah. in anything that i got white but i gotta plan my next four turns against it because i'm yeah. gonna be taking that thing out for the next four turns because it can just go that far ahead so uh yeah valkyrie's a valkyrie's a good pick man i like it it's an interesting one um yeah i i feel like a lot of the picks that i've made are probably a bit polarizing um, which is fine but <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was just up there for me as an annoying one. I got you. Yeah, no, I like it. Good one. All right. So number three, rune crabs and rune everything. Uh, <laughs> rune everything. <laughs> oh, I'm so rune glad you crabs, put this on man. there. <laughs> rune crabs and rune everything. Cause yeah. it really, it ruins everything. Um, <laughs> uh, Nah, man, I just hate mill, dude. I hate mill, and with the new uh, drop lands that come in, sack it, gain a life, and then go yeah. pick one of the three, and then we've still got Evolving Wilds, and we had Field of Ruin, and I have a particular card that's on my I hate to see it leave list <laughs> that uh, I like to abuse a lot, and it works with all these lands the same way, and you could probably say I'm a hypocrite for choosing this because I do the same thing just in a different way. But uh, Rune Crabs, man, that little girl can end up on a Sunday <laughs> buffet somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so, I love that. I love that you have such a strong hate. I So here's my thing. I actually don't really Don't touch considered... my stuff. Just don't touch my stuff. <laughs> don't mess with it. I really considered putting Tasha's Hideous Laughter on my mm -hmm. list because... To me, that's the more annoying card in that deck because it exiles as well. So it's like, because there are strategies where like if they mill you, it's like, okay, cool. Like, keep going because I need this. Like, right, reanimator, right, right, right. which I love to play. So I didn't, Ruin Crab didn't bother me quite as much. I know what card you're talking about. I assume that made it on your, your other list that oh, I'm yeah. excited to hear. But <laughs> yeah. um, Tasha's Laughter almost made mine. But the reason it didn't, one, I like mill. Sorry about it. Oh Two, my god, bro. I also <laughs> every time I face a mill deck, I don't feel bad when they mill me out because like 90 I'll say 85% of the time they don't make it to the win in right. in current standard right now. You if they like get close. Mil? Yeah, I do like mill. Dude, okay, well, guys, we're dissolving the It Resolves channel. <laughs> so, it's no, been fun. I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, man. I oh. I do like mills, so. But yeah, it is a it. rough strategy, man. I see people using it, man, which kills me. Um, what happened to using dual strike and and uh, galvanic iteration with it that makes it go turbo? Um, I don't see anybody running those two cards with it anymore. So yeah, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. You know, eighty percent of the time, eighty five percent of the time, they don't make it to the end of my deck list anyway. So no. I'll kill them before then. Yeah. I mean, that's where I've found, uh, I genuinely, every time I face a mill deck, I get really close and I'll mm. be like, ah, crap, I'm about to lose them. Like, oh, wait, I get it. <laughs> and but then, I am a huge, you know, sorry, go ahead. No, that was it. I'm going to cut you off, bro. No, I am a huge guy that just don't touch my shit. <laughs> yeah so it's, it, man, it frustrates me man it, it tilts me in a game even if i'm not uh even if i'm not playing somebody direct challenge if i'm on the ladder man milling I my stuff it. and making me discard and stealing my creatures it yeah tilts me i feel you don't touch mine <laughs> just play the game with yours <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it um i'm gonna move on to my next one um which we're gonna end up cutting my list a bit short because you you took my gold span dragon which was my number three um but i will say uh my number four or my number two technically uh mm -hmm. is magma opus 
Uh, I don't really love Magma Opus. I don't mind it, man. I don't love it. Um, here's my thing. I mm-hmm. didn't mind it. And in fact, I enjoyed playing it quite a bit until Hinata came out. Yeah. And then I was like, man, fuck this okay, deck. <laughs> yeah, with Hinata, it's an absolute pain in the ass, man. Yes, it's so frustrating. And it is the Magma Opus, <clears throat> excuse me, that's more frustrating to me than the Hinata. Because mm-hmm. the Magma Opus is obviously a more flexible card. Like, you can play that in a lot of different decks, and it is just a good card. It's great when you get a Magma Opus off. It feels amazing. When mm-hmm. you're in a Hinata deck, it's just like, oh, okay, it's just another game, and I'm going to win now because I got to throw this out for two mana and it's like fuck you dude like <laughs> no yeah, yeah no um, man it just does everything and like it's a really powerful card and like i said fun to play but um i find it very very annoying especially in the hinata decks but even just in general because a lot of the is it builds did run the the dual strikes or the iterations to try and double up on the opuses and mm. um it's just one of those things where in tandem with a lot of other cards in the meta, it's so frustrating. If it was on its own, I don't think I would care nearly as much. But it's the fact that there's so many things that work to its advantage right now between Hinata and the like copy spells and stuff. It's just, it's annoying. Because uh, like, at that point, just you don't need to copy it. Just, <laughs> just throw it out. <laughs> It'll <Yeah>. be enough. <laughs> like. Yeah, I still don't mind it much. Well, I mean, you know, I run I run hard Esper control on the ladder. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I've usually got the removal in place when I because I a lot of playing Esper control is knowing what your opponent's playing yeah. and and being able to set up to take away those pieces. So I usually have stuff in play where or ready to uh, remove Hanada and then counter whatever they're going to do. And if they do the Opus and I'm expecting that, I usually have counters in hand for that. And then if they've got a negate in hand, I usually have a test of talents for that. Um, So I don't really mind it that much, but yeah, man, Hanada absolutely broke that card. Well, and not just that one. Hanada broke a lot of cards. Hanada broke a lot of cards. And truthfully, maybe Hanada would have been a better pick here. But like Magma Opus was, I think, the biggest But Hanada's not rotating out. (laughs) Well, that's the thing. Yeah, like I can't really say Hanada. But like I I think Magma Opus is the biggest payoff for the deck Mm -hmm. in general. If I'm, yeah, I believe I'm saying that correctly. I don't, I haven't played the deck in a while, so I don't know. But um, it just felt like such a powerhouse card. And then they were like, here have it for two um it's like okay cool yeah no yeah no Mag- magma opus is the top end of that deck it yeah. is that's yeah. the good call um but yeah man i don't I mean i don't mind it that much but uh i got i got cards i hate more <laughs> so, I feel so. You. but i got one i, mean, I hate more <laughs> do you, if you haven't picked it yet man throw in another card in your gold span dragon slot since that was a double up oh Okay, think I'll try one. and think of one. Said, I'll try and think of one. I know one that you should have said already, but it may be your number one, so I'm not going to say it. But oh, uh, I'll go into okay. number two here. Um, yeah. Expressive iteration. Ah. Bye, bitch. <laughs> so it's like, bye. Um, look, man, I've, I've abused it myself. It's such an abusive card. It's it's so, okay, so I get to put one in hand, one in the library, one yeah. exiled. You're doing your lands on turn three. Man, it's such an abusive card. Uh, yeah. Such a, but an absolute beast of a card to, uh, you know, just tutor the top of your decks to get to where you're going. And um, definitely, uh, I mean, a lot of the hate comes from having it with the all run galvanic iteration the all runs epiphany galvanic iteration deck list it just yeah. made it absolutely unstoppable uh expressive iteration is getting banned across other formats for a reason it's just that good man it's, it's just so that good, good yeah. and uh it was it was format warping um i think not so much rune crabs and rune everything, but I think it kind of falls right in line with my feeling with uh, Goldspan and Chariot. They've had a grasp on standard for so long that it's 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 time for you guys to go, man. You yep. you, you had your cake and you ate it too, so get the hell out of here. I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, it's a very frustrating card. It's it's one of those two where I found it very annoying um, to see the opponent play, mostly because mm. they played it wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah. and so I, 
I just got really annoyed by it. It wasn't. It's not a card that I have a strong opinion about. But it, it to your point, it's a hugely powerful enabler, and you dig so far. I mean, three cards is a lot of cards. So for two mana, uh, especially yeah. in a standard environment, and so I'm with you on that. I, I get it. It's a. It's good that that card's gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It really was just for me. It was one of those. You had your cake. You ate it too. Yeah. Go away. I get you. Um, but it was definitely it was it was a it was a format warper for the entire time it's been here but and it's a great card i'm not putting yeah. it down it's a great card but yeah go go please go, <laughs> go. Yes. just go um i'm picking one off the top a little mm -hmm. bit here um mostly because i went to mtg goldfish and looked looked at the format staples to see what major cards were still in standard that will be i want to know up. if one of the two are are actually what i'm thinking you're going to pick that's what i want to know i'll tell you i if think it you is. know my number one because i feel like okay. i mentioned it to you but i don't All know right. um i'm gonna say luminarch aspirant is a card i'm really happy to see go i hate that right card yeah. it's such an annoying little thing man yeah. it like it's that one was of those... my number one pick was it really yeah, but that's all right because I oh, had I'm it sorry. with another card paired together. No, that's fine. Oh, no, that's fine. I had it paired um, with another card. So, yeah, no, I agree completely, but go ahead. Yeah, My Luminarch bad. Aspirant's just, no, you're totally fine. It's one of those cards where, like, if you're playing removal, you feel like you have to remove it pretty quickly because otherwise it gets out of hand very quickly. It works extraordinarily well with Modified, which was obviously in Kamigawa. Um, and so you get a lot of decks that can really take advantage of those counters and it's such a good enabler for it because you can spread those counters out over the course of multiple turns. But the thing is, because you feel like you have to remove it, it just feels terrible to play against because it's one of those, it's a two mana one one <laughs> mm -hmm. that you have to have to answer right away. <laughs> and it's like, this isn't a card I feel I should have to answer. I should be able to just wait and deal with it later in the game, but you don't, you have to kill it. And it's so yeah. frustrating. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I again, pulled that off the top of my head a little bit, but it really is a card that has triggered me enough times where I'm just very frustrated by it. And it does work in a lot of different strategies, even just Boros Aggro right now. Um, yeah. With the Thundering Raiju in particular, it does great at enabling that. Like, it's just annoying. Well, it's one across the format, or it's one across the standard format into other strategies now. A lot more this season, yes, than I have seen it in the past because it does fit in Boros. I've seen it in Esper with mm -hmm. with Rafine. Um, yeah. It works with. I mean, I know I haven't seen too many people run it, but it works well with Falco. Um, yeah. Being able to remove the counters and put them right back on, um, dude. I hate mono white. Hey, I really mono hate white, mono white. Yeah. I hate mono white. So I see it drop. I, well, look, I see a planes drop. And until I see another <laughs> color, I'm just pissed. But yeah. uh, no, man, absolutely. It was my number one. It, 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 mm, it's yeah. what's made mono white completely viable for this long. Uh, yeah. May not be the top end, may not be the, you know, may not be the ultimate threat of the deck but it is definitely the bone structure of it so yeah it's up there. um absolutely hate that card man <laughs> such a good card it is such a good card. why couldn't it have been black <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that nah man yeah no great, great pick so yeah. it, on a, if we go on to number one my number one was luminarch aspirant but it was paired with another one too and uh, I haven't seen, so we had mentioned doing this episode a couple weeks back, and we mm -hmm. mentioned that at the beginning of the podcast. And since we've mentioned that, I've been getting more and more excited about it, a little bit of anxiety <laughs> because I've been seeing a lot more channels doing what we had already talked about. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I've not seen anybody say yet, which kills me. Uh, look, dude, I love you, but PVDDR's got to go, man. Elite Spellbinder. <laughs> I absolutely hate that damn card, bro. It was good for a reason. It's got his yeah. face for a reason, man. But that card, don't touch my stuff. You're <laughs> so, very protective. So, um, bro. Uh, yeah, it's just a painful card, man. It's yeah. a painful card. It warped the format the entire time it was here. It's in pretty much... Well, it's in every mono white deck, so yeah. it just uh, it's 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 protection for mono white in a way. Um, it can warp 
the actual game it's in just by playing it because you can you know take their casting cost and push it out long enough to give you enough aggro on the board to close out the game and in a deck that already has enough aggro i didn't need it to have ways to warp the game so <laughs> well not only that but to your point i mean yeah you you take their sweeper you take their answer to whatever you're doing you know but on top of that it has yeah. flying uh, and it's a three one and it's a three one which <laughs> Look, sounds really easy to deal with, right? It's a 3-1. Yeah. So you ping it and you kill it, which is perfectly valid. But a deck that's running sweepers probably doesn't have a pinger for one, <laughs> generally no. speaking. Um, and no. on top of that, like even if you're a creature deck facing off against Mono White with the Elite Spellbinder, the likelihood of you having like a good solid flyer to be able to block that is completely dependent upon what color you're running. Because so many mm -hmm. of the other colors, like mono green, has reach, but like they don't really have flying, and it's not one of those things that's great to deal with it. And so it's just, it's so easy to get the damage going after you play that elite spellbinder. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it's over the top. I mean, we've, you mentioned that with the flying and stuff, but in conjunction with uh, or, or paired up with luminarch aspirant, yeah, uh, even better. I mean, it becomes a four two, and then a five three. I mean, you're just getting, you know, you get knuckle sandwiches to the face the entire time until you get it yeah. off the board. Man, I hate it. I hate it, bro. It's a I good hate pick. Mono White so much. I really hate <laughs> Mono White. I'm with you. I loathe you, Mono um, White. I loathe you. <laughs> this, all right, my last pick is a bit of a, a catch-22 for me because I love this card. I did mm -hmm. not put it on both lists, though, because I found other cards that I, I like more. Um, but... I'm really sad to see it go, but I also think it's probably good for the format. B Blood on the Snow, I think, needs needs to go. Um, <laughs> was that what you expected? All right, cool. Uh, yeah, Blood on the Snow, phenomenal card, right? It's a six-mana sweeper, which is, like, right in the good spot for a standard format. It mm -hmm. is very dependent upon another feature of the game, which is, of course, the Snowlands, because you want to run a snow deck if you're going to run Blood on the Snow. Uh, but it was so good for the mono black control list because you could just kill a Planeswalker on the field. It doesn't matter. You could just use its minus ability, do something massive to the board, sweep the board, and then bring it back if you needed to. And it's like... How the hell is this supposed to be fair? Uh, and so, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of these cards that put a lot of decks over the top. And I think it's a really good example of how powerful magic, standard magic has gotten over the years. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, if you were to look at a line graph, I think we're certainly at a, a pretty high peak just in general. Um, but Blood on the Snow is a prime example. You know, it used to be you could just sweep and that was good enough. Now it's you have to sweep and bring something back, and it can be yep. a really powerful six mana thing. And it's like, that's that's pretty game warping. You know what I mean? That's massive. Uh, that's a huge tempo swing in your favor. That's it's it's insane. Uh, and so as much as I love the card, as much as I run the card, I had to throw <laughs> it on the list because I just think it's so ridiculous. Cool, man. Yeah, I had to. That's um, it. That's, That's all it. I got. I'm not saying nothing because, <laughs> but no, man, it's a, it's a six mana sweeper, but uh, yeah, we'll wait. I'll hold yeah. my position. Yep. I know. I know. Uh, we can jump into the cards that I'm sad to see leave and we'll try and be mm -hmm. a little quicker because I'm realizing how far we're into this episode. We're unless you want to cut in. it, unless you want to cut it and make it two episodes. Oh, I don't know. What do you want to do? Yeah, this let's your do topic. it, and we can take a bathroom break and drinks, <laughs> and we'll come back, and we'll do it up, and we'll see you guys next week for uh, the other one. Let's wrap it up with a funny story. That works for me. I'm cool yeah. with it. Oh, I like yeah, this. Yeah, man, we'll get two episodes out of one. Hell, Hell yeah, yes. value town. Guys, we're so smart. It's almost like we do this for part of our living i say part of our living <laughs> part um, of it. For, yeah, you know, I'm cool with so that. that so, so Kevin could buy another stand-up disc. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> No, I, I told them. Um, yeah. It's so I can buy more cardboard to make there other people go. jealous. That's all this is. There you go. Um, so quick funny rap or quick no, interesting let's do rap? The, the story, our normal thing. We'll just talk about a story. Uh, um, 
What Shit. you got? <laughs> I, I got nothing, bro. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this was so uh, unplanned. This was yeah, so... man. This just went straight to the crapper. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Everything's good. Trying to think. Okay, so uh, I don't really have a funny one, man. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, think of uh, here. So what I got, man, is uh, what I did last time. I did the Thor Love and Thunder. So here's mm -hmm. another here's another public service announcement. If you like Resident <laughs> Evil, the game, don't watch Resident Evil Netflix. No. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's that you just what I do got, PSAs man. on, like, cultural I references mean, it's we not should, even... what we should do is have a movie review channel because dude God, that'd be damn, fun bro, these things are so bad lately um I no nah, i um, can't think of much funny man we didn't have uh we don't have a whole lot of funny going on right now it's just yeah. a lot of busy busy but uh um so the wife took our youngest daughter and our oldest uh son to uh, new orleans for vacation for the week and uh we live in an older house, man. And uh, I'm not saying I believe in ghosts or anything, but bro, man, this house, even when they're here, does things. Uh, I don't know if it's just because it's old and makes the creepy sounds and stuff like that or what, but man, I'm sitting there watching Peaky Blinders the other day in the bedroom after mm -hmm. stream with the dogs, and there's no sound, no yeah. sound going on other than the movie. And the dogs jump off the bed barking and get to the top of the stairs leading to the basement, which is mm -hmm. super effing creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just barking, looking down the steps of the bay. I, I wouldn't even go over there and look down. I'm just like, come on, guys. <laughs> come, back. come on, guys. Get back to the <laughs> <laughs> mom's not here right now and and i got nothing to deal with that stuff man i got no <laughs> ghostbuster packs so come on guys let's go i don't care if hell's gates opening down there we got demons just come back just leave it <laughs> just leave yeah it. Nah, I get so you. yeah man that's all i got man just just the ghost experience off the top of my head <laughs> i uh <laughs> i i every once in a while will get really creeped out but i've realized in marrying caitlin uh that she gets significantly more creeped out than i do and so i have had to kind of grow up a little bit and be the guy that like if she wakes up in the middle of the night you know our dog is barking she's like kevin i think there's something down there like what's going on i i, I don't know what it is i have to be the guy that goes down and checks it yeah. out because she sure as hell isn't gonna do it which is fine. I don't mind doing that. That's not a complaint. But I've had to, like, learn how to not, like, be afraid of noises. And what's yeah. annoying for us is that we we live in a townhome community. So, like, of course there are noises. There are other people here. It's not just us. So, like, duh. But yeah. uh, that doesn't sink in at, you know, three in the morning. You're, you're yeah, just no, worried man. about the noise, and so wait till you get wait till you get old enough along that plane there that yeah. you do what I do. My wife's like, "Hey, I heard something." Be like, "Well, cool." If they're distracted by you, <laughs> then I've got a better shot of taking things <laughs> over. So why don't you go check it out <laughs> and yell at me if you need me? <laughs> I love that. I still go. I st I don't make her yeah. go. <laughs> I'm no, just like, no. "What do you of want me to do so. about that shit?" <laughs> No. nine times out of ten it's like something really silly yeah um, yeah and so it doesn't bother me there's literally yeah, never but, been a time that it's anything to worry about so yeah but man this house throws shadows and stuff just yeah. because of the lighting and we got a couple of sunroofs and stuff throughout the yeah. house and man it just no man just no dude just not no. While, no not while i'm by myself yeah i get you um well, I don't really have a great story either, uh, because it has been such a busy <laughs> we week. I'll just so, be we honest. We were so prepared. <laughs> yeah, dude, this was the best podcast episode yet. Um, I, it's just been such a crazy week for me. I've been trying to get like ahead on work stuff, and we're coming into event season pretty soon. Uh, so September is going to be a fun month because not only do we have a new set release, but I've got two conferences that I will be out of town for. So interesting uh john's gonna be taking over the channel um no nope. i uh <laughs> i have been trying to get ahead on stuff so that way a i'm ready for vacation but b next week is hopefully an easier week when it comes to getting content recorded and all that stuff i can focus a little more on it and i've got some just goals in mind that i'd like to try and you know work out and see if we can make happen but 
all that to say, uh, because it's been such a busy week, I have had to like mentally check out every once in a while. And I was like, what, what's a f- just completely silly video game that I can play? Because I'm not a big gamer, just in general. I love mm-hmm. Magic. I play Magic. I don't play a lot of other video games, <clears throat> just in general. But I was like, what's a good dopamine-filled game that'll just make me feel good about myself? Uh, <laughs> and so I looked through like some of the games that I had, and I realized I had already downloaded Diablo 3, which is obviously a very old game at this point. But that game is just dopamine that looks pretty good and so i was like cool i'm in for it and so i restarted diablo 3 and man something about just checking out and clicking on a screen a lot just makes you feel real good because you don't lose at diablo 3 (laughs) it's not like it's a super easy game and it's just fun and so i've been really enjoying it cool yeah i don't do diablo but i've got something similar man i do uh (laughs) this is gonna sound so old but i love them man i love them uh i got chess and backgammon on my phone and how uh, old are you you're hey man but look uh well look i grew up in a world of board games over tv especially when your saturdays are hee-haw and your sundays are the lawrence welk show uh Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of our channels. audience will know what any of that is. <laughs> no, man, no, they won't. They won't. It was it was three channels, and two of them were in black and white. That's how old Oof. I am. Um, and I grew up on the on the farm, so we didn't have cable of any sort. Yeah. Uh, but no, man, yeah, I do the checkout too. I yeah. just do a quick, uh, I just do a quick um, chess match or backgammon match on the phone or something, just to kind of break up my brain a little bit. And sure. then come back and look at things in a different way. So yeah, checkouts necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just been a blast. It's been one of those things that checks me out a little and is is nice. I also did uh, create a little foil proxy this week. That was my fun little creative project this week. Was to for anybody that doesn't know, I posted it on Instagram uh, and Twitter and all this stuff. I don't even know if the camera is going to focus on it. Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's an Elish Norn that I created because Elish Norn is my favorite card. Wow. And I um, have you you haven't seen it, have you? Why I, I, I man I get I've got you're like the only notifications I get on my phone. Listen to me stutter my way through this. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, why have I not seen it? I don't know. Um, but I I I did the whole process where you print it out on transparent sticker paper and then like strip a foil card and sticker it on and then sleeve it um just to see how it worked because i had never really done it before and so i was like yeah that'd be kind of fun and so i oh, made is it like the a full art yeah it's the full art like man that's nice player rewards version that i made that's nice um, bro it's sick i really like it i think it looks good somebody commented and was like is that going to be in the patreon rewards i was like <laughs> no <laughs> dude if you did make it like a make it like the 25 dollar patreon reward make no, it like I'm a one shot deal because the yeah. thing is like i have to make hand make each of these it's not like i well, i mean you know 100 do, copies or whatever. do 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 ten dollars and throw it on i don't know fifteen dollars yeah. and throw it on the shop or something i don't know yeah I don't or know. i don't Maybe even know so. if we can do that i think it has to be on like patreon kind of like a giveaway does, you can't sell not, the product blah blah I blah yeah. i wonder how people, people get do. away selling the proxies on etsy and stuff though because i see shops that have been on there haven't got taken down so there's got to be some type of way out of it well historically uh wizards hasn't really from my understanding gone after anybody for proxies like as long as you label it as a proxy it's pretty apparent that you're not like you're not trying to counterfeit uh which is kind of the biggest issue i have with alters and proxies and that kind of stuff is that people do try and counterfeit i have been very Mm -hmm. upfront that we don't counterfeit cards we do alters and proxies right but Right. Um, I also think, you know, a lot of Etsy dealers also create their own artwork or find a way to get their own artwork, but I have heard of some or seen some that don't, and I don't know yeah. how they get away with it. it seems I don't really... either, man. I did see that article though, that they caught somebody that I guess the alters were so good. They couldn't tell the parts, uh, yes. the, the thing away from the car or the differences between the cards yeah. with the, the bend rule, black light rule, whatever or yeah. light and bend I see that's whatever not- man i don't try look if i'm gonna proxy a card i make sure the card's so out of the norm that it yeah hey 
this is not the real thing. So well, it's I, like, yeah, I mean, I I try to be upfront about it because I do love making altars. I think that's one of the most fun things that I ever endeavored to do. And that was on a whim. That was years ago. Mm. I just thought it'd be a fun thing to do and people really liked them. And so we started throwing them out as Patreon rewards to give it back to, to some of the community. But it's always been clear that it's a yeah. proxy or an altar, not a counterfeit card. It's not meant to replace, you know, or... We're not trying to like we're going garnish into a whole nother episode of here, bro. yeah this is this happens a <laughs> lot um <laughs> stop, stop we're gonna we're gonna do a proxy yeah. versus non-proxy what's Hell your thoughts yeah. let's go uh, um but yeah but yeah so. man let's go ahead. i mean yeah if you're down we'll record the other one right behind this uh we'll see if we'll we can i may have a I, i've gotten work emails so we may have to, to oh, okay. dive off but uh all that to say guys we really do appreciate you watching this episode we will follow up with part two next week uh, and so that will be the cards that we're sad to see rotating out, which I'm really excited for because I found some fun ones that I'm I'm gonna miss. Uh, yeah, me but... too. Nothing's real main. Well, I think a couple things are real mainstream, but for the most part, it's just stuff that I utilized and plugged in my decks that I'm gonna miss that I use frequently. Most of mine are like cards I like breaking. Uh, but yeah. we'll talk about that. Um, yep. <laughs> but uh, all that to say, guys, if you were um, happy to see some cards go, let us know what they are in the comment section. We'd really appreciate it. It'd be a great topic to just kind of open up for the, the greater community and hopefully talk about a little bit with you guys. Uh, and yeah, part two will be next week. So uh, with that being said, again, we appreciate you all being here. I hope you all have a glorious day. And we're going to get out of here. Do you want to do your little, your little thing? Peace. <laughs> Nailed it. That little giggle at the end. So cute. <laughs>